day. Meanwhile, it's the battle for the billionaires. Republican donors say they are planning to spend over $750 million to help affect the 2016 races. But there are concerns about the lack of substance um, among some of the candidates. I mean, we have heard this from the Koch brothers saying exactly that. They don't like the lack of civility in this campaign. Uh, so does that mean that Republicans might soon be forced to change their tune? We are asking legendary investor Foster Fries, who has spent a long time, has been a long time supporter of Rick Santorum. Good to have you here, Foster. Oh, Trish, I can't tell you how delighted I am to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Appreciate it. You bet. Anytime. I, I want to ask you about Rick Santorum because he's been struggling there in the polls. He's at 0.3 percent. Are you still backing him fully, knowing that it's getting pretty challenging? Well, I'm, I'm a, a basketball player, and I remember going into the fourth quarter down uh, 10 points. And you just didn't sit on the bench and say, we quit. And uh, I think 10 points uh, on the polls will put him right, uh, right in the middle of the pack. So there's a long time between now and uh, when the final vote takes place. And, of course, we remember he was 5% uh, in the polls in Iowa nine days before he won. But it's a little bit like uh, uh, he expressed it uh, being a demolition derby. You let all the other cars crash into each other, and you drive your car out around the perimeter. <laughs> and then when things have the final few cars, then you get your car geared up. Well, let me ask you sort of an overall question. It relates to Santorum, but it relates to Republicans in general right now, Foster. And that's that, you know, the Democrats, Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, they're out there offering all kinds of actual tangible stuff, whether it be, you know, subsidized or free college education, whether it's daycare at work, whether it's, you know, paid time off, more time off for, for new moms and dads, um, whether it's free health care. They've got something that everyone could latch on to. The Republicans are facing a broader challenge. I mean, you think about Rick Santorum and his involvement in welfare reform. Uh, and they're saying, you know what, it's not about free stuff. You've got to actually work for this. Well, given that half the U.S. population or nearly half the U.S. population is not paying any money in federal taxes, how do you convince all those people to vote for you, to vote for Santorum or any Republican when the other side's saying, but I'll give you this? Well, I, I think uh, many of the people do pay a fair amount of taxes on the payroll taxes. They might not pay an income tax, but they do pay payroll taxes and also the sales taxes and their telephone tax. So they're not getting a, a free ride exactly. And those people that are in that category, let's face it, Trish, those are the core of our country. Those are the Americans that show up when uh, we want to get checked into a hotel at 1 a.m. and grab our bags at 5 a.m. to catch an early flight. So the people you're referring to, that's the one that Rick Santorum is really speaking out to. He wrote a book, uh, uh, Conservative, uh, Blue Collar Conservative, and in there he talked about the 74 percent of the American population have never uh, never graduated from college. And he champions uh, their efforts. In fact, that's demonstrated by the fact that in his two senatorial races in Pennsylvania, he had one more one million more Democratic voters registered, and yet he won in both cases. So what so is I it think, that he's giving these people that incentivizes them to go to the polls and, and vote for Rick Santorum? I, I think integrity. Uh, what a lot of people might not like his positions, but even the people who hate his positions, they have a huge respect for it. He doesn't put his finger to the wind and say, what's popular? Let's go there. He puts out what is best for America. And he has uh, so articulated so well that we have to be sensitive to our culture. The other day, uh, there's a TV show where a young man gets on. And he says, I fathered 30 babies by 24 different mothers. Wow. Now, now, the fiscal conservatives might start scratching their head and say, you know, I wonder who's going to pay child support for those 30 babies and maybe I ought to become more culturally conservative as well because uh, Rick has championed the importance of the family and the importance mm -hmm. of our culture and that precedes our political environment and the importance of, of individual believe... responsibility it sounds like um, well yeah getting back to the values you know, envy envy used to be sin when I was growing up and now envy is embedded in our various uh, in our government and has mm -hmm. spawned the entitlement uh, mindset so the culture is important, and Rick has given an unbelievable tax plan. 20% flat tax for corporations, capital gains, yeah, individuals. I'm surprised by that. You know, he's got 20% across the board for corporations, for individuals, and also even for capital gains. Uh, and I'll tell you why it surprised me, Foster, because part of what has benefited this country is investment. You know, if I put $5 into the market today or into a, your new business, yeah. I'm taking a risk by doing that. 
Yep. And there's yep. a benefit to me having a lower tax rate. Not not forgetting, of course, that my five dollars has already gotten taxed because that's money I already earned. But if I put that money to work in the stock market, shouldn't I have the opportunity to get it back um, and, and take that risk with a little bit of reward on the other end? I mean, don't you destroy incentives by saying it doesn't matter if you invest and you take on that risk? Well, I think that's a very excellent point, Trish, but I think what his plan does to offset the point you just made, he allows all corporations, or all businesses to expense all their items the first year. Can you imagine what that does to the complication of all the depreciation schedules that gets rid of all that? And if you can de depreciate 100% uh, uh, a new truck or a new typewriter, that's that's a really big deal tax-wise. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's for businesses. Business. That, that, that's something. But again, back to individuals that are just trying to invest in the future. We want to encourage that investment. And part of that encouragement comes from a tax policy that incentivizes it. Before I let you go, Foster, Donald Trump, what do you think? Well... People ought to know why he's succeeding if you've ever been in one of his hotels. You go in these upscale hotels and you go, have a little note on your bed that says, Dear valued guests, please partner with us to help preserve the precious assets of our resources by hanging up your towels. You go into Trump's hotels, you got a little card that says, Hang up your dang towels so it doesn't cut into my profit margins. So I think his <laughs> forthrightness and his honesty and his boldness, I think that's what's uh, captivated America to, to uh, Donald Trump. He's, Sounds he's like you're amazing, positive on him. Pardon me? It sounds like you're kind of positive on him. I mean, if, if Rick Santorum doesn't work, work out, would you, uh, would you be back in Donald Trump? Well, when I sat at the debate uh, the other night, I was at Boulder, and to hear the final speeches of each of those people, I was just, I, I, I was almost brought tears to my eyes to see the quality of these candidates that we have. Mm -hmm. Just right down the line, everyone's a great human being, and Jeb Bush is a great, I mean, these people are wonderful, wonderful people. And getting back to the issue of substance, you know, I'm so grateful that the uh, C CNBC moderators gave the Republican Party a huge gift, because now uh, everybody realizes the bias and, 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 the, and, and the orientation towards, an, you know, kind of gotcha. In fact, I, I asked asked every one of my Democratic uh, liberal friends if they agreed with me, and sure enough, both of them did. All right. Foster Fries, thank you very much. <laughs> good to have you here. Bye, Trish. Have and a good you day. You were just talking about that.